Yeah! Hi, hi everyone, it's Celeste, and welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay. Yeah. I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup so you can become the character of your dreams. Yee. Today, I'm showing you how to make this beautiful fuzzy jacket. Celeste, will you demonstrate right here, please? So this fuzzy jacket, well, Celeste is demonstrating right here, this fuzzy jacket is fully lined and it has a nice closure here. It is a metal frog closure that is a hook. So it'll hook like this and close. You might actually remember this from my Best of Stoffer haul. Thank you, Celeste. You can go away. Go away. Go away! So you might actually remember this little clasp from my Best of Stoffer haul. This fur is actually from Joann's. My mother-in-law bought it for me. Shout out to my mother-in-law. This is so soft and plush and I am so happy on how I made this. This is so easy to make that anyone should be able to make it if they know basic sewing techniques. So without further ado, I can't wait to show you how to do this, but make sure to click that red button down below to subscribe to never miss out on any future cosplay content. I will be wearing this out on the town and for a special cosplay coming up just in time for Valentine's Day. I love this outfit. I am so shocked. It looks like I bought this outfit. I don't think I've made something like this classy in a hot minute. The last time I think I made something this classy was my Catwoman wedding dress. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave me in a comment down below. To make this project, I'm going to start with this luxurious plush fur. This fur was bought at Joann's and you can see the little salvage edge here. This isn't a blanket. I have to thank my mother-in-law, Gail, for this beautiful fabric that I got for Christmas. I cannot wait to start working on this. Also, you'll need an oversized shirt. I got this shirt a long time ago. It doesn't fit me and we're going to be cutting this up so you can see the difference. Measure out how long you want your jacket to be. My jacket, I'm gonna start at the very top of my shoulder line and then go down past my breast to make a cropped jacket. The length I'm going to be using is 17 inches and I'm going to be using about an inch on each seam for seam allowance. So go ahead and lay out your shirt on the ground and mark how far that seam is that you just took that measurement. I did a rough estimate of how long it's going to be and then I folded it over and cut it out. You can use a ruler or something better, not a dog, to cut out your shirt to the right length. Now we're going to cut off the sleeves of the shirt. You look so cute! <laughs> Although it looks like you're being fitted into a sausage tube. <laughs> Now with your shirt sleeveless, go ahead and cut off the shoulder and side seams. For the shoulder part, I just cut directly down the seam. I didn't cut it off. Take one of the sleeves and open it by cutting down the seam. Now take out your front and back pieces of the shirt, fold it in half, and then cut down the center. You want this to be very nice and clean because the front is going to become your new front pieces of your jacket and your back you're going to cut unfold instead of cutting out one wonky piece of fabric. With that, you have just created your pattern. Fold your fur on the inside so the flat side is on the outside. This is going to be so much easier when cutting out your fabric. Now go ahead and pin your pieces onto your fabric. When it's nicely pinned, make sure that you are ready for all the pile to come off and then we are going to be slowly cutting it out. We're going to do a different shape for the sleeve, so don't cut that out just yet. Because my sleeve is short from my t-shirt, I want to change it to a long sleeve pattern and I want to include this with the lining seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is measure out the length of my arm and then mark it onto the fabric itself. I'm cutting about 27 inches for the total length of my new sleeve. This includes seam allowance and how long my arm is. So what I'm going to do is slightly make a large cuff size and it's okay if this is not really going to fit you. This jacket is going to be a loose fitting sleeve, not tight fitting. And then I'm going to redraw the entire shape from the top to the new line with that I have made. I'm not worried about this marker seeping through. I'm using this marker so you guys can see what exactly I am doing and making sure that this line is very straight. I'm gonna slightly sketch it downwards because I don't have a ruler, but feel free to use a ruler and any other straight edge to create this line. 
So I'm going to measure it out from each point and then continue from there. When I am satisfied with the shape of my new sleeve, I go ahead and cut it out. And remember, this sleeve is going to be a little bit baggy and it's going to be super cozy this way. So if you want to make it tighter, go ahead and follow more of the seam from the shirt. For me, I'm going to make it extremely wide. Now what you want to do is remove your pattern pieces and gently pick up your fabric pieces. You want to take your pieces outside and shake them as much as possible so you don't have any leftover fur on your floor and then bring them back in for sewing. My lining fabric is actually very wrinkly so I'm going to go ahead and iron it before cutting out the pattern pieces. Go ahead and fold over your lining fabric and then pin your pattern pieces to it. Here you can see I'm actually using the full sleeve of fur and that's because this is the pattern that I have. So I'm going to be using this as my reference and then cutting it out. Note to self, I'm actually going to be shortening the lining on the sleeve so you don't have to make it as long because I want the fur to come inside. You'll see this in a later step. Now with your pieces cut out, go ahead and pin the front to the back. Make sure to do this for the fur and the lining fabric. For one of the lining fabrics, go ahead and serge the end. This is because we're not going to sew this part together completely yet. Do this for the front and the back side. You only need to do this on the lining fabric. Go ahead and sew together all of the jacket pieces for the fur fabric. Now I'm gonna make sure that I remember this by marking it with an X on my fabric. Now go ahead and start sewing together the lining fabric as normal except for that one seam. Now I did a small basting stitch. This way it's not a problem when I attach it to the fur jacket. I did this on the top and the bottom. Oh my, be careful when sewing. You might actually end up busting a needle. Make sure to remove your needles when you're sewing, otherwise you might break a needle. No fun. Now before I went forward and started sewing the fur fabric jacket, I went ahead and serged all the edges of my lining piece. I want to make sure that this is super reinforced just in case I needed to get it washed or if I get a little rowdy with it. I want this piece to last a long time. Go ahead and sew your sleeve together. Pin it to the armhole, remove your sewing machine casing so you can have an easier way to loop around your sleeve hole, and then sew it together. I used tons of pins, so this means I'm going to go very slow. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to serge the end. I just want to mention when you are working with your fur fabric, it is so much easier if you actually use sewing clips. Sewing clips are so much easier. It can handle bulk sizes and will press down the fur versus trying to stick in the pin and having it go in different directions. This is going to be a little bit more tricky if you are using sewing pins, but don't let that dismay you and continue going forward. This is me pinning down the sleeve. When you're done with the seam with the fur fabric, go ahead and turn it around and fluff out the fur. This is going to make sure that the fur isn't trapped inside the seam and it looks fairly nice and it kind of hides the seam and gives it a solid look. Here's a quick compilation of pinning the fur fabric, sewing the fur fabric, and showing you the sleeve itself. Up close, it's really tight and puffy, so this isn't going to be really easy going through the sewing machine. Originally, I wasn't going to add a collar to this jacket, but I decided against it seeing as I had this strip of leftover fabric. So what I'm going to do is take this rectangle that is the same length of the neckline, I'm going to fold it in half and clean it up and create a nice rectangle. From this, I'm going to sew down the sides. This way I can invert it and it becomes a really nice fluffy piece. Now what I'm going to do is find the middle point of the collar in the back and this I'm going to mark with a pin. Once I mark it with a pin, I'm going to do that with the same little collar piece that I just created. In order to do that, all I'm going to do is fold it in half and hold it to the center. Once I find the center, I'm going to mark it with a pin. From here, I'm going to pin those two points together and then continue down the neckline, making sure that the collar is amply attached with multiple pins. Again, this would be so much better with clips and I'm sorry that you can't see it that well. So I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew it all together once I'm ready. Now it's time to add the lining. Go ahead and flip your collar inside and put right sides together of the lining and the fur jacket. You only wanna pin the front openings and the collar first. Do not sew in any of the sleeves, otherwise seam ripping is going to be very difficult. Make sure you keep that one pocket hole open in the lining. This way you can flip it inside out so the right sides will face out. Right now the wrong sides should be facing outward. Go ahead and sew it down. After you get the tops and the sides down, pin together the bottom edge and sew that shut. Your jacket's almost complete. All you have to do now is pull the jacket slowly through that hole opening in the lining. 
If you made a big enough hole, it shouldn't be a problem. Mine was a little bit small and it ended up ripping. So again, work really slowly. It's time to close this little hole in the lining. I'm going to use a needle and thread and I'm just going to make a little knot and then continue ladder stitching this close. If you've seen some of my other videos, I show you how to ladder stitch and it's very popular in those like five minute crafts videos. So basically you just go into the fabric once and then twice and then you go to the other side of the fabric and then you do the same thing. You go in twice instead of one at a time. This is going to create a ladder effect and when you pull the string closed, it'll hide the seam. When you get to the very end, finish off the seam by adding a few little knots hidden inside it. The way I'm going to do this is go slightly into the fabric and then pull a loop. When I go into the fabric, I'm going to have the leftover remnant of the thing, of the string, <laughs> sorry. And then I'm going to pull my needle through it, creating a knot. I'm going to do this about three to four times and then snip it off as close as I can to the edge of the string. Now to finish up the sleeves, I don't like it being this long. I had a few extra inches. So what I'm going to do is mark it off with a straight edge and then I'm going to cut it off. I made sure to line up the edges first before doing anything and I pinned them out correctly. This way I have a completely even on both sides. There is an Another way for you to do this, you could easily just measure and cut both sides the correct way. But for me, I find this faster if I pin it together completely and then I cut it out. I'm going to inverse the fur sleeve into the lining sleeve. Using a needle and thread again, I'm going to ladder stitch this closed. I wanted to do this this way, the seam is not exposed and all the raw edges are tucked inside. I did this for both sleeves. Now that I'm done sewing the sleeves closed, I'm going to pull the sleeve through so the fur is exposed and the lining is on the inside and now you can see that it's perfect. I really love that the fur wraps around on the inside and keeps my hands cozy. I really love these metal hook and eye closures I got from Besta Stauffer, so I'm going to be sewing this at the neckline of the jacket next to the collar. Using again needle and thread, all I'm going to do is secure it down with a whip stitch. I'm going to try my best to not let it go through the fur fabric onto the lining fabric. This way the lining fabric is completely devoid of any stitches. And then I just do this multiple times until it's completely secure and I tie it off. And then I repeat for the other side. So I know that this is like a super big cozy jacket, but I just can't not touch it. I just want to wear it all day long like a penguin! Yeah! So cozy. I am so shook that I made it from a pattern from a t-shirt and like can I just tell you guys how soft this is? I wish you were here. If you guys ever get a chance to meet me, like I'll probably be wearing this jacket because it is so soft. That's not a normal thing. I'm so sorry. Anyways, I am so happy about how I made this jacket. I hope you guys learned something too. One of my one thing about the final outcome that makes me so happy is how the lining turned out and the collar. I have never made something like this before. This is kind of like a bomber university jacket, if you think about it. But it is so warm, so soft. The lining is so well done and it fits perfectly. And I am so shook that my sleeves look so great. So leave a comment down below what you think of my jacket and if you would like to try it. Make sure to check out some of the other videos floating around me and remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!